Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Championships, checking in team number 2881 Lady Cans. This team double catapult. I absolutely love this robot. Finalist twice so far and a chairman's award this year. So congratulations on that success. And to help me speak more about this robot, I have Erica, Zosha, June, and Hope. And you're gonna be following that cargo journey through, but really take a look at these really cool catapults as we go through a very unique function uh, of this robot. And then the uh, Flamingo Climber, can't wait to talk more about it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. If you are planning on attending the World Championship, come meet others in the fun and FRC Discord community with our combined meetup on Friday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. local. Location will be announced closer to the event, and you can stay updated by following in either the fun or FRC Discord. Let's start on your intake here. We'll talk about uh, just some of the features and capabilities, and then uh, talk to me about any maybe changes you made throughout the season as well. Yes. So we originally designed this intake along with the rest of the robot in CAD so we can make sure that everything works and like flows together, follows all of the restrictions, like doesn't go back to 16 inches and all that. And so right, this is made out of Lexan which makes it very bendable and crash proof as they say. And so this thing, do you want to kick this down, starts here. So the cargo goes in from the bottom and then settles in the catapult. And also, this to help, if any robot happens to run into us, this will hopefully kick under. And we added this later in the season because we noticed that there was defense, and if they were to happen to run into us, this would be a great way to prevent it from getting broken. This uh, kick under that you're talking about here, was that part of your initial design, and like, how did you come up with that process? Uh, no, so originally this was just one piece, and there wasn't this elastic here. But we decided, I think it was one of our mentors suggested that we make something that would prevent it from breaking if a yeah. robot were to hit us here. And so we have this, which is run by elastic and will move outwards if this goes under. Uh, let's go into your catapults next. Uh, Hope's going to be talking more about uh, that. And I'd love to hear a couple things. I mean, we, I've seen a couple robots with catapults, but not quite this double catapult setup, which I think is really yeah. unique and cool. So talk to me more about how did you decide to even come up with this in the first place, and how's it been working out for you? Well, in previous years, we have used uh, flywheels. And this year, since cargo is based on PSI and not a set shape or size, yeah. um, a lot of flywheels become really inconsistent with that. So we were trying to think of a way to eliminate that, and we ended up coming up with a catapult. We had originally thought to do a singular catapult with two buckets on the end to be able to shoot two at a time. And we did a couple of tests with that. It ended up not working super great. They would collide with each other, run into other issues. So we have two individual catapults run with motors um, and just some chain. And then we have cargo holders that are holding the cargo pretty much just in place. The catapult is actually supporting the weight of the cargo. And inside our holders, we have light sensors. So we won't shoot the wrong color cargo and we have the ability to eject cargo. Can we dry fire one of them? Would that be possible to show um, that off? Yes, could you catch? I'll do that just in case. <laughs> Wow, so when, when you're shooting from the field, uh, where are you able to shoot from or, and where do you like to shoot from best? Um, we can shoot from mostly anywhere on the field. We have had some inconsistencies with it, but we are working through that at the moment. Um, for, for a while, we were just shooting from against the hub yeah. because we did not have any way to tell where we were on the field, but we now have a limelight that is uh, pointed towards the hub. Yeah, uh, and actually, why don't we go into that next, uh, we'll bring in June to talk more about uh, vision uh, first and uh, what you're doing from that and from a programming side. So let's talk more about that. Okay. Um, so we, like Hope mentioned, we have the uh, color sensors in here, but we also decided to add vision tracking this year. Um, so we'd never added vision tracking before. It was always on our wish list, but yeah. we, no one was really super interested in it or we never could find like a good use for it. 
Um, but this year we have two cameras, as you can see, one here, one here. This one um, on the front allows us to aim and it can detect where the hub is. Um, and then from there we have a computer uh, program that basically just uh, takes that information and figures out um, how much we need to move the catapults and like how fast and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, we've had, like Paul mentioned, we've had a little bit of inconsistencies, but sure. we're working on that. Um, and it does seem to be working pretty well. Let's wrap up with Josha talking about uh, your climb around here. And we got to talk about the nice uh, flamingo aesthetic design as well, too. Uh, but not past that. I mean, it's a fantastic climber. Uh, it's been working well for your team. I know the last match had a fall, but your team has recovered really well and yeah. uh, come back up through. So talk to me more about uh, some of the features. And then uh, if we can go through the climber sequence, it would be fantastic as well. So, of course. Um, so our climber has basically two main parts. In the middle, we have uh, this hook, our lovely flamingo hook, and it's run by a lead screw with a motor down here. And so it's going to go up and grab onto the mid middle bar and it'll pull ourselves up and these are spring loaded or I guess surgical tubing loaded now. We changed that um, just before this last competition. And so these, it'll break the zip tie and these will be able to pop back up so they're, so they can hook onto the bar. And we'll be resting on these two and be, it, this allows our middle hook to be able to go back up, grab the next one. And there's two pistons down here to knock it back so we can reach the next bar. So can we see it deploy and maybe talk about just each process as it goes through? Of course. So, so that will get us onto, um, with grabbing onto the high bar. Um, we'll, we'll, you start with the arm up and we'll grab onto the low bar and we'll pull ourselves down and they'll knock back like we just saw and to reach the next bar. When you're looking at from a, a timing perspective to go at, what have you done to try to mitigate, like uh, when you go from high to traversal, like that, the swing that we see a lot of robots yeah. do? So, let me bring this back down. Um, right here we have a 3D printed piece. Um, that is our main thing to mitigate the swing. It's, so there's a cut about right there in it. And this radius here is a little bit smaller than the radius of the bar. So when we grab onto the bar, the 3D printed piece will stretch around it. Um, and so we to reduce our swing. Also, we have some programming built in to um, stop the climb sequence if we do swing too much. Well, Obviously, we need to make a little tweaks on that. But well, I, I think your robot's fantastic, and I can't wait to see you watch more of it here uh, at the Texas Championship. So, 2081 Lady Cats, thanks a lot for taking the time. To tell sure. us about your robot here, and uh, can't wait to see your performance here, and uh, hope to see a world championship qualification. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it is not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.